Welcome to the Authentic Dentist Podcast. Join Dr. Allison House of House Dental in Scottsdale and Sean Zayas, founder of Zana, a company helping dentists extend their care beyond the chair as they lead dentists deeper along the journey of authenticity to reach greater fulfillment in their professional lives and to deliver remarkable patient experiences. At the core of the authentic dentist is a belief that the answer to the current challenges in dentistry is dentists discovering that their greatest asset and point of differentiation is their personal brand and that forming that brand out of their authentic selves is the best strategy for success in dentistry today. So this podcast is brought to you by Zana. And Zana makes electric toothbrushes, but it's more than that. They have a program that'll grow your practice with their electric toothbrushes. Hey guys, this is Sean and Dr. Allison House with the Authentic Dentist Podcast. And today we're going to talk about, I don't know, I guess that it's always, it's the sadder side of dentistry. It's, um, it's what I, I don't like talking about it, but at the same time, I think it needs to be talked about. And that's kind of the dark side of dentistry and that's, you know, mental health and everything that goes along with it. So what did you read about this week in the news? Well, we've been reading about it, um, mental health, burnout, but we are seeing a lot more suicides and maybe people are actually saying that it's a suicide rather than being vague, but we are seeing more suicides from dentists and that's scary. Now, is this like across the spectrum with ages? You know, are we talking about like, you know, because I'm just saying there's probably a different crisis of like getting off the ground as a dentist, which is very difficult versus like, I thought I was in the clear, I'm in my 40s. And then all of a sudden I realized I'm not set for retirement. My bills are still stacking up. I I don't know. I just feel like those are like two probably different places that, you know. Statistically, I I think it's middle-aged men that are most likely to commit suicide. But in dentistry, we see it across the board. We see young people in dental school and you see older people who have had a malpractice incident that are all of a sudden in crisis. Wait, did you say in dental school? Oh yeah. We've seen people in dental school commit suicide. It was a, I can't remember, but one of the presidents of the um, American Student Association committed suicide a number of years ago. That was just devastating. She was a senior in dental school. So so you're saying statistically outside of dentistry, it's, it's middle-aged men, but in dentistry, it doesn't follow that pattern. And it, again, no one has clear data because people don't publish that it's a suicide. We only know that it's a suicide because of discussions amongst ourselves. Okay. So the cause of death isn't always linked as suicide. No, it's just listed as something vague. Or, you know, a motorcycle accident. Well, actually, they drove their motorcycle off the side of a cliff. But it's not, it doesn't say that. That would be a suicide. So among medical professions, do you think um, other, other, I don't know, other ones are maybe immune to this? Or you think it's, it's across all of them? I suspect it's across all of them. Again, I don't have good data. My son, the actuary, would say you're just speculating but from, from what we read and what we're seeing, yeah, I think that a lot of physicians and dentists are struggling. Wait, so he calls you out if he feels oh, like yeah. you're speculating? Oh, yeah, he's like, you don't have stats on that. I don't. It's true. But there's so many things in life that there's not stats on, but we still kind of know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I don't have the stats, and so I always want to make that clear. I don't have statistics on all of this. But it does seem to be a trend that we're seeing on Facebook and when I meet with other dentists. Okay, so you've been a dentist now for? 23 years. Congratulations. Thank you. We actually had a party yesterday, 20 years for my practice, my own practice. That's amazing. Like, that's a huge milestone. It is a huge milestone. And it has been, yeah, rough, ups and downs. I mean, it's just life. Now, you, I don't want to say you've always had a stability just in the fact that, you know, a great upbringing, um, you know, great partner that supports you. And maybe if you didn't have that support, you know, things could have been darker in some of those lows. But was that ever something that you even felt like you were close to? Such a personal question. But I I, I'm okay with answering that. Um, I, I did have a suicide attempt when I was 16. And I was hospitalized for three weeks because of it. 
So mental health has always been a, a struggle for me. And I suspect that most dentists have that perfectionistic, we're very hard on ourselves and we're intelligent. And those things can cause some mental health issues. So I, yeah, it's something I feel like I've struggled with my whole life. Um, and I've had to do a lot of things to try and keep myself in line and happy. Yeah, it's interesting you say like the the factors, like you said, perfectionist, um, incredibly smart. And and I think the problem with that sometimes is like you're aware, you're acutely aware of the ways in which you're not enough, maybe, you know, or or your practice isn't doing a good enough job. Um, it's one of those things just the other day. I, I don't know how many episodes we have. I think it's a little bit over 50. We just got to 50 and, and someone in the office here is like, Hey, congratulations. Like you just published your 50th, 50th episode. And I was like, almost like I looked at him like, so what? Like meaning it wasn't a big deal. And he's like, no, man, you, you got to celebrate that. And I just realized like, there's a certain mindset even just of, wow, we need to celebrate every win and take it all as a win where me, I'm just like, yeah, but if it didn't translate to something that I care about, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And and I imagine dentists might be the same way. So it's like, if it's not yet attaining that, that lofty Well, the goal, terrible thing is you've set the goal, but that was 15 years ago. So when I met the goal, I'm like, well, yeah, but I had new goals. So this goal isn't all that important anymore, but it is. I mean, we've set, we accomplished this goal. We've had 50 podcasts. That's very exciting. And remember the day when we didn't have any? <laughs> so you have to remember that. This is a win. It's interesting because, you know, what we were talking about earlier, the balance between um, staying super focused versus uh, allowing yourself to uh, have wonder, which can lead to some good wandering and, and eventually some good discovery. And it's almost like in the same exact way, that tension between yeah, you, you want to look at reality and know what reality is. You don't want to just live in some sort of uh, delusion. But at the same exact time, I think reality can be skewed sometimes if we're focusing on the wrong things and making making those things too big, you know, the, the areas in which, again, we're shortcoming or all the issues. You know, you could talk to a dentist and they could be like, yeah, but this is this is how many patients come back and this is why we keep having missed appointments and this is my staff turnover and they could just keep seeing all the ways in which they're still haven't figured it out and this is why my debt keeps piling up but they may not be seeing the ways in which they have grown the ways in which there's still so much hope and reason to hope and reason to believe um it's that comparative though you know these these young people at that profoundly gifted school would look around and say well i'm not very smart well, how ridiculous. Of course, you're very, very smart, but you're not the smartest person at the profoundly gifted school. So you have to look at like the entire picture. You have a practice. You're making more money than most people in the country. I mean, let's, let's get real here. You're doing well. That is so interesting. <laughs> I think that's been something I've always struggled with because, uh, you know, the second I started a business and it was a startup, I'm like, oh, why can't I'd be as successful as like Elon Musk, right? Or Facebook, you know, Zuckerberg. And all of a sudden it's like that becomes, yeah. The, You're the, who you compare yourself to, but that's like three people in the country. <laughs> you, you have to look at the entire picture. And if you look at the entire picture, you're doing incredible, but we, we don't do that. We only compare ourselves against the top. It's not reasonable. So I'm a dentist and I might be struggling. Do you think dentists are really, I don't know, do, do you think it's very clear that they know that they need help? Or do you think it's one of those slow fades that by the time they realize that they need help, it, I, I don't know, like what, what would the warning signs be to look for if you're wondering, man, like how is my mental health right now? Well, I think you start seeing some signs of depression where you don't want to get out of bed. Um, you're tired all the time. You dread going to work. You know, those, those little pieces of depression that you start to see creep into your life. You're not enjoying things you used to enjoy. And, you know, there, there's a whole piece of um, pharmaceuticals that are out there. You talk to a psychiatrist. I would not suggest you go to your physician to start with. Um, but psychiatrists can, there's lots of medications out there. There's also just 
like we fixed my hormones 15 years ago and that made a huge difference. Just having enough thyroid made me feel better. So as we get older and we forget this, our body changes. You need to look at, all right, do you have enough chemicals in your brain? Do you have enough hormones to make yourself feel good? And then how do you adjust your brain to have those, those rose colored glasses? Yeah, I, I, you know, so during, during COVID, um, you know, I'm sure all of us know people that unfortunately, you know, didn't make it like my uncle. It was crazy because we didn't think he was in bad health and he gets COVID at the same time that his daughter and and son-in-law did and his daughter was pregnant. So it really became about like, okay, um, with your pregnancy, with your baby, like all the attention was on her and she's like, oh, my dad's fine. He's like, he's strong. He's healthy. Well, one of the things like we didn't think about was the fact that, um, he'd been divorced, I don't know, five to eight years and was living on his own. And it's one of the things that all of our family didn't realize, like, because he was on his own, there just wasn't someone else that was able to see the signs of how fast he was declining. And, you know, I guess when they found him, he was still alive. His oxygenation was like 41% or something crazy. So, um, he was, he was barely, barely hanging on. And unfortunately, you know, COVID had advanced too far for him to come back. But I guess the thing here is like, you know, if you have dental friends, especially like if it's in school, maybe they're not in a relationship, maybe they don't have a good community around them. Um, Isolation, I think, is the number one environment where people can really get into trouble and end up doing something really, really stupid um, simply because they're alone, you know? So I think that's, Stay in community, stay connected. Um, don't get married just to, you know, be safe. But but you should have a community around you that notices that you're drinking too much or that you're sleeping too much because it is hard for you to self-reflect and see, oh, a year ago I, I, was, I was doing better than I'm doing today. And people around you can give you that feedback. You know, and I know one of the messages we like to share during COVID and post COVID was just like how resilient dentistry was like COVID was terrible for the economy. It was devastating. And the fact that dentistry survived in the way that it did is, is, is amazing. But also to say like, Hey, look, that hurts so many other people, including your patients and the ripple effect. And the, in the wake of that, maybe people are slower to receive treatment. Maybe people you know, are slower to come back into the practice and realizing like in the midst of a challenging environment, like it's still amazing if like you're doing a great job, you know what I mean? Almost like to give that, that acknowledgement of you survived COVID and you're still doing a good job, like give yourself that credit. And all businesses go up and down. I mean, that's a normal cycle of business. So it's okay if there was a lull, it's, it's going to come back. You still have to be optimistic and look at what do you have to do to make your practice better? But just because there was a lull doesn't mean that you're a terrible business person. It just means, yeah, it was a lull. So why not your physician first? Because I think you said don't talk to your physician about it. I'm always worried about physicians that prescribe antidepressants because I feel like they don't pay enough attention to how people feel. Psychiatrists will ask you all those questions about how you feel, and a physician will be like, do you feel better? Good. Go. Gotcha. So here, here's the symptom. You're depressed. Let's get rid of that symptom by giving you antidepressant instead of looking at why are you depressed? And that's why the psychiatrist. And, you know, as a dentist and that perfectionism, we don't want something that just dulls us. We want something that, that makes us feel better and doesn't have a lot of side effects. And that's different for every person. So you, sometimes you have to go through a couple of antidepressants in order to feel better. There's also a number of things out there that you and I've talked about that are just performance enhancing for brain that you can look at. And um, we talked about lion's mane. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know a lot about nootropics, but I just know that I, I, I don't know if they actually help as far as like mood. I just know they help as far as cognition, focus, and that feeling of like alertness. Um, but, but those but that are all could, brain chemicals yeah. that enhance your brain. And those are, those are helpful. So you don't necessarily have to go the pharmaceutical route. There are other options that are natural. But whatever you do, you need to do something to keep your brain healthy and focused. And I think we need to recognize that most physicians, remember physicians have to work 36 hours 
in a row, oftentimes, they're not doing that without something. Just recognize that. They are taking something in order to survive that 36-hour shift. There's nothing wrong with taking, you know, something healthy like caffeine. So my last kind of thought here is, you know, whenever we talk about something as negative and sad as like, you know, suicide rates in dentistry, like I think the positive is that like actual dentists are struggling. And you know how sometimes because of social media or sometimes because of going to shows, everyone shows up with like their best, like, oh, I'm just crushing it. My practice is doing amazing. And it almost paints this picture of like, well, something's wrong with me because my practice isn't amazing. I am struggling. I don't know why the patients aren't coming back. I don't know why the checking account doesn't look good at all. And I don't know how to pay my team. And it, it can just create this, this false reality, this, this facade that doesn't exist. So every now and then when we do talk about this, it's kind of like, hopefully people can get that encouragement of like, wow, like it's okay that I'm struggling. It's okay that dentistry is difficult. But the message here today is like, yeah, but there's hope, you know, and, and you can do this. You are resilient. You are capable. And there's plenty of dentists around you um, that have walked this path and have found a way to overcome. Yeah, dentistry is, is a great profession, but don't compare yourself to the three people you see on Facebook that keep posting their cases. <laughs> Those are three people. There's 160,000 of us. We're all struggling sometimes. Thank you for listening to the Authentic Dentist Podcast. To join Allison and Sean on this journey, hit the subscribe button to never miss an episode. Here's to your success. Express yourself fully. Live authentic.